Hello, welcome to my talk. Thank you very much for coming along. Um, yeah, I want to say thanks to uh, honestly, honestly, Jonathan for yeah doing this, putting the show on. It's, it's been amazing, and uh, all the other artists and exhibitors as well. Um, Rosalind, Graham, and Tess, uh, brilliant work, and it was a real privilege to have exhibitors alongside you. Um, it's still on for a few more days. Uh, the exhibition ends on the 19th, uh, so if you've not seen it yet and you're proximate, I'd recommend going to see it because there's some really, really good stuff. Um, so what I was doing with this show was I just um, I don't get the chance to exhibit many works at the same time, so I just kind of shoved everything in, see what works, see what it did, see if it talked to other stuff, whatever. Um, so uh yeah as um i featured eight works and as you can see they're all incredibly varied but that's that's kind of like my practice you know it goes in so many different directions um that it's sort of appropriate so whilst it might have been more sensible to do kind of maybe a linear progression of of the work um that doesn't quite work when you <laughs> sort of see them all together so I'm just going to look at a few elements in the build-up to each of the works I've exhibited. So it's going to jump around a fair bit. Um, but yeah, hopefully that'll that'll keep it interesting. Um, also, contrary to the statement that accompanied uh, this talk, um, I'm going to go a little light on the theory. A um, couple of reasons, because if you start going on about sort of the th theological and uh, theoretical side of it people do tend to get a bit bored and you run the danger of sounding a bit sort of pretentious and wanky um another reason is because this is such a new medium um whilst elements have context within sort of a, an art historical sense um not not all of it does and so yeah it can get a little a little convoluted really and also i'm not really great <laughs> the uh at all the at all the theory stuff um so what do i do i'm a sculptural painter um so what is sculptural painting um it's paint that is viewed in a sculptural manner this isn't that new um there's been you know sort of pigments piled up and lots of, and sort of you know paint used as as a sculptural medium um but the thing is with paint, it does require a surface and gravity, whereas what I do, and you can see from this picture here, um, the paint is kind of suspended. It's like a, it's like I make a dimension just for paint and then work inside it. Um, so how does that work? Well, I'll show you. This is... Okay, there we go. Uh, that is a container. That's the water-based gel. And I take syringe of oil paint and I paint inside it. Oil and water repel, that's chemical repulsion. Paint stays where you put it and you can do stuff like that. Lovely. Um, I often get asked how I how I discovered this. Um, so it's, it's, it's the classic sort of 1% inspiration, the other 99%, whatever. Um, <clears throat> So I was experimenting trying to stencil layers of oil paint into sort of a three-dimensional form. Uh, and my tutor at the time, a chap called Ed Rennie, just said, oh, Aaron, you need to really experiment, really go crazy with it. So I just started adding loads of different stuff together. And I noticed the oil paint and some other stuff sort of repelled. And so I was like, hmm, huh, what, what's going on there? So... You, you know, I've been developing it for sort of about 10, 15 years. Yeah, about 15 years now. So that means, you know, you've got, because this hasn't been done before, you've got to invent your own tools and methodologies, uh, absolutely everything. Just come up with different ways of doing stuff for, for problem, solving problems that no one's ever encountered before, you know. Um, so that's that sort of shows in the work. Um, is it painting or is it sculpture? Uh, is another question I often get asked. Um, I'd say it's both. And after sort of a lot of discussion 
and theory and stuff, the view is that it is uh, paint, it is sculpture, but needs to be viewed as painting. Um, I was actually recently taking some work up to a gallery in Conway and uh, the person at the front desk asked me, <laughs> they were like, oh, so, okay, here's your work. Is it is it painting or sculpture? And I was like, oh, bloody hell, good question. Um, I suppose it's blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, uh, and then she was like, no, 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 I just need to know which room to put it in. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, uh, these are some sort of, of the earlier works and... At the time, I was still thinking of them very much as sculpture. This leads on to what I was saying. You can see how, although they are kind of painting in 3D, they still hark very much back to what they are physically. Like they are boxes essentially filled with liquid and then some other stuff inside. So the one on the uh, left looks a bit fish tanky. The other one is, you know, sort of submerged bodies. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, and... Uh, in the early ones, I was trying to go towards a lot of sort of figuration, different things like this. And you can just see in the one on the left, there's some stick figures. Now, I really like stick figures. I think they're, I think they're, you know, excellent. Uh, not symbolically, but semiotically, I think they're, uh, they're great. And uh, what I think uh, you'll see in this next book. What I think they do is that they humanize without anthropomorphizing, which is they make something very human, yet don't make it for humans. Um, yeah, so I, so this is what sort of one of the themes leading to <laughs> the, the the gallery work. Um, here's some more stick figures. That's a lot, and what I liked about them is that something that is essentially lines, traditionally it's just lines, the stick figure, they actually have like physical form in this. It's It was a real kind of leap from kind of, you know, painting and drawing into sculptural painting and drawing. Um, and so you see here, there's like a mass and they sort of form this cloud. Um, so that went on to, oh yeah, there we go. That's, that's quite nice. So you can see just how, I have no idea how many there are there. Uh, Quite a, it took quite a long time. Uh, even more in this one. So at the start of the pandemic now, um, I, like everybody else, was just completely shocked by, you know, sort of the, the daily death toll and stuff. And there wasn't really much that I could do. And so I thought I'd sort of memorialise each person by sort of painting a, a tiny representative figure for them. Uh, and I continue to do this each day for the entire first uh, first wave. So it got to, I think, about sort of 56,000 just in this box. Anyway, um, so this was nominated for an award from TPAG Gallery in Wrexham. And I think it's a, a fitting sort of well, it's not for me to say whether it's fitting trivia or anything, but yeah, it's it's. I, I felt it was right for you know the victims of this. Anyway, reason I'm telling you this is because it led directly to. Oh, there you go. You can see the whole thing there. Um, if you notice at the top, uh, you see that the people get a lot more kind of uniform and so closely packed. I think that's. It seems to be a good representation of the the feeling and stuff at the time and suitable you know for it. and a lot of people used it in kind of a you know a focus for grief and so anyway sorry i'll stop talking about it. okay uh, and the reason i've shown you that is because it led directly to this which was featured in uh beep in the elysian show now this is a test image a test image uh, a test piece for a much larger work, which I do what I would like to make at some point. Um, it's called Show of Hands. And what this is, is this is made alongside the previous work. And this is uh, people from around the world have drawn around their hands and then sent me photos of their, of their hand. Uh, I've then rendered each outline in such a way that it harks back to, you know, cave paintings of the, Sort of, they have the handprint, and then they've they've blown, sort of paints. Uh, 
it's a bit like it sort of humanizes a little like the, the stick figures, um, which again, I, I quite like, but also I think it's sort of the most prolific um, and widely spread form of sort of old, uh, old world art, uh, if you will. And I think it, again, it just sort of terribly humanizes and, um, but I like that it was, it's been up updated for this. Um, yeah. So anyway, this was on show Elysium. Uh, I, I quite liked it and I can't wait to maybe do a huge one one day with sort of, you know, life-size hands. Um, yeah. Right. <clears throat> okay. Going back to figuration or use of the human figure that we saw earlier. Uh, this is a piece called Head Garden. And this was in my degree show that I told you we jump about all over the place. We've gone to present day to 11 years ago to, you know, the dawn of Neolithic time. Um, yeah, it <laughs> uh, happens. So <clears throat> uh, this actually, this was quite a successful piece. And I think you'll see how it sort of took figuration and made, and sort of more, more sculptural work and made it into kind of sculptural painting. It's like definitely suspended. You can see that it's painterly, looks like an object. Um, yeah, it, it did quite well. This one won an award in... London um, at the Discerning Eye. Uh, it still kind of reminds me of a, a Coldplay album cover a bit. Um, <coughs> but yeah, fine. And then obviously continuing with the uh, figuration, uh, this is a self portrait. This one, um, it's not hard to deconstruct sort of my own face, mask like, dead tree in the back. Um, and you can see sort of the technically it's 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 moved on but yeah i was never fully happy with sort of portraiture or things to this kind of this degree because it's they still look a bit i don't know they still look a bit contrived it doesn't really feel like painting um <clears throat> but yeah interesting point about this one um was on show in Cardiff and some gentleman offered me a hundred pounds and a night with his wife, uh, in exchange for, for this one, which, um, yeah, glad to say, obviously I, I and she didn't, uh, <laughs> didn't, didn't go through it. Um, okay. And then sort of, yeah, going with the figuration, the portraiture, get to something like this, which is head gardener. Um, and it's just about your the subject and the subject's sort of perception, perceived world. The sort of garden on her head is sort of her thoughts, her dreams of that garden, which she would would design and things. Um, but the, I think the reason this kind of thing never sat right with me is because it's it sort of it it looks like an object dropped in almost, and it has another quality which I couldn't quite define until I heard two little old ladies actually talking about it when it was exhibited and they were like oh it's lovely but it is aired in a box like and I was I thought yeah no it is it it, it definitely is that's that's what it looks like it's got a touch of memento mori or reminder of death about it um it looks like a made or alive thing you know so suspended like you'd find in sort of natural history museums of things so you know the octopus uh, tentacles and stuff so yeah and that's that's not I don't, I'm not don't want to make you know curiosities you know I want to make sort of sculptural paintings really don't I um but anyway that so that this portrait sort of led to uh quite a number of years later this is uh this was the plan all along you can see the the double-sided thing of it um aspect of it sort of giving you more more information um this one, this one was made for, it was featured in the show. I don't know quite why I put it in. I just wanted to see what it did. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, and it's made for sort of selfish reasons um, or self-interested reasons. I had a long running, uh, I, I don't know what to call it, uh, collaboration with um, the Business Insider online magazine sort of art bit uh and because it was during pandemic they couldn't send someone up to video my work on so i was taking videos um and making pieces 
uh, and then after months of doing this, I think I made actually three separate pieces for them. And after months of doing this, they decided they didn't want to use any of it and just never contacted me again. Uh, but yeah, so that's the only reason I, I made this. I probably had it not been for that, I probably wouldn't have made it. Um, but anyway, you know, it was it was in the show and so in the beep exhibition. So yeah, there it is. Okay. What are we now? Oh yeah. I forgot I had a video of this one. <laughs> oh, with the videos, they start off not great quality and then it should come. Ah, yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, yeah, the, well, I, I like the, the the duality, sort of the, the, the different sides, the different things as you walk around them. Um, I think the one, one of the main things that's come from this, from the show in, in Swansea is that you realize that this stuff does need to be walked around. The viewer needs to be needs to be moving around it. They need to, yeah, be dynamic. Um, <clears throat> you can see I was going for more painterliness with this one. Um, and trying to make it not so not so clear cut as to say beauty, you know, uh, the missile and things. Um, it's gotta be gotta be a bit of so rough in there, I guess. Uh, okay, this is some more video of just some very early stuff, um, probably about 12, 13 years old. I used to do animation, video with it and stuff. Um, but yeah, I just sort of let this play whilst I <clears throat> sort of lay, sort of lay the, lay, the, lay the groundwork a bit for something. So um out of out of university uh i sort of switched between sort of dull minimum wage jobs zero hours you know 650 an hour all that all that kind of stuff and i can't and these pieces are incredibly costly in terms of materials uh, and time to make so if you're say working minimum wage you kind of need I mean, wage, and you need to work as many hours as possible. You haven't got the time or the resources to make many of these pieces at all. Um, so it's a bit of a conundrum, really. Um, you know, it's sort of what do you do if you can only really realistically make two or three in a year? What do you do with them? You know, how do you um, what what do you do with that? Um, I would also I'd like to quote Frank Zappa. Um, he said. Uh, that the more demeaning and lower paid the job you do, <clears throat> the more your art will suffer. And I didn't quite, I, I, I'm only sort of beginning to understand that now, because what I was talking about <clears throat> uh, just before that, if you only make a couple of works per year, then you need to make them work for you. You need to, they need to sort of stand up on their own. They need to be, desirable um so people are going to want to exhibit them and people are going to want to buy them because you know you're going to need money to make more of the stuff and you know you want to get them as, as far as possible it's got to be eye-catching it's got to be eye candy right um so yeah I sort of stuck doing a lot of stuff like that for a while um and then i realized that well the these things it's essentially it's like model making almost it's just sort of making models in paint and that's great, but it's not. I mean, it may be helping advance my, advance my my technique, kind of uh, you know technically, but it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't say anything. It doesn't add to to any sort of the canon of art, I'd say. So, um, so whilst I sort of started doing this, I'd start adding kind of touches, like this balloon, for instance, um, sort of riding above this landscape is symbolic of uh as, as humans place so um as sort of being able to observe ecology and the environment but also sort of having the power to do things about it but also being the reason that it's going to shit um but yeah so anyway so things things like like that and sort of steering away more from stuff like this um this is kincadia um <laughs> Yes, yeah, so from a good few years ago, and whilst it's it's lovely to look at and it's great, and it's named for the um, 
the painter. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's not. It doesn't doesn't really do anything <clears throat> for for me and and my practice. So wanted to sort of you know stop making models and sort of make it more about painting. So that's why I made uh, this one. This one's also, as you can see, this is on display in Swansea now. Uh, it's night lights on the TAF. Um, so I used, to, I used to go out quite a lot uh, to sort of draw, photograph the old orange sodium street lights in and around Cardiff. Um, and I just really like the way they're like little islands of light. And so I thought well, if you had, if you viewed them from above and put them in an abstract formation, it would look a bit like painting. But then if you went and explored it more, uh, you could see that they were in fact sort of actual little environments that you could you, you could sort of look around and, and see. And I think that exploration and that kind of touching almost and getting into the environment itself is is important with uh, with uh, sculptural paintings. Um, it's quite. Has that ended? Yeah, that's OK. So as you can see, yeah, from from this is completely from the side, from the direction. Um, Yeah, they, there you go. Uh, what do we do to do to do? Uh, so I and I started sort of experimenting a lot with landscape and sort of landscape painting as opposed to this. What I was doing, um, you can see that looks fairly sort of okay in representation. It doesn't really have a background or a ground. Um, it's just made of kind of suspended elements, but getting more detailed as you go further in, you get a better sense from this. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is this sort of the idea of uh, in paintings, you imply distance, you use pigment to, you know, give a background that's far away, stuff in the foreground close. So this is me playing with uh, sort of implied distance and physical distance in the same work, in sort of representational uh, work. Um, and that, that that was great, actually. I'm glad I, I'm glad I did this one. Um, sort of taught me a lot. Um, and also simultaneously, I was beginning to define, uh, refine technique and like mark making and things like that. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, this one really illustrates what I'm talking about in terms of background. So you look at the lower half of this one there there's just suspended elements um looks quite like sculpture quite you know sort of sculptural but then at the top you can see that it that there is like a background and stuff and so then it, it sort of becomes painting i mean i know this this is more an interior than a, a landscape but still you know it, it sort of bears up um it's called nana's chair i think this one is uh and you can see I was sort of starting to do, starting to sort of develop different types of mark making, different textures, different sort of um, even feelings of, of of bits of bits of paint, you know. Um, so yeah, and then you kind of you sort of take that stuff and apply it to other works like actual landscapes um i know this one looks a bit like a fish tank <laughs> um, that wasn't intentional it was meant to be sort of just uh, just a landscape but yet you can you can still see from the you know the forms the marks physicality that you know it's, it's it's something else and you can tell it's it's sort of meant to be a landscape as fish tanks kind of are landscapes um there's this is this is sort of also um but yeah, I quite I quite liked I quite like this idea of of representation, physicality, <clears throat> um, and just kind of overt painterliness. I felt that that was that was important. Uh, so that leads to uh, this one, which was this is again in the Elysium show. Um, this is down in the valley tonight. Um, this one is probably. I think my most successful piece to date, I would personally, I, th I think that, uh, and I th think probably a lot, most painters agree. Um, 
it's a lot to take in. It's kind of it's it's, it's a bit crazy. But uh, essentially, what I what I did was um, it's representing the valley in which I live, the Kirog Valley in North Wales. And what I did was I walked around um, and made lots of little paintings of different aspects of the valley from the geology to the settlements to the rivers you know, um to trees to uh fauna and the mycorrhizal or fungal kind of network under the ground just just everything i could think of and came up with kind of analogous elements for them and just sort of shove them all together um and you can see these this these is this is a side shot from both sides. Uh, I believe this little yellow bit there is just about down here in this one. So they shot from either side, looking inwards. Um, but you can see like the the layering and the the depth and sort of the complexity and the the mix of just it just different 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 aspects, different types of mark making and. Uh, yeah, I did a lot of things with this one that I probably wouldn't or shouldn't do again in terms of the actual process. Um, like this was a real sort of try everything out, see what works, but do make it to quite a strict uh, idea. Um, you'll get a bit of a sense of depth of it from again. This is work you need to you need to sort of move around. Um, I think the quality should improve in a second. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's getting better. Um, but yeah, again, like the this work requires the viewer to sort of to move around it, um, a dynamism of 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 viewer really. <clears throat> uh, you need to walk around it. You need to explore, um, and you'll notice that it that this sort of doesn't really have a ground. But the ground is sort of a background, but it's sort of implied. Like there are lots of, of bits that like you can see straight through it in the middle. But um uh yeah, no, I'm I'm very, very fond of that piece. Uh which is odd because I'm not not often uh too fond of my own works. Um <clears throat> okay. So in this one, you'll notice that it has absolutely no ground, no background. So you would deconstruct this upon first seeing as just a solely sculptural object. When you get closer, kind of look around the back, you look at sort of the, the type of mark, the fact that it seems like paint and sort of the texture, and then you wouldn't you wouldn't be so sure, but you still, the mind's eye would, would deconstruct that as painting. And you can see in contrast to this one, <clears throat> that uh, this one would be, deconstructed or viewed as a painting so because it has that that sort of flatness almost that background even though it's a very sculptural uh sort of surface it would be seen as being more likened to a, a 2d work um and the reason i put this in is because uh sort of years after i made it um it's actually sort of got a bit more just gained a bit of rele relevance kind of changed meaning because it sort of looks a, a little like sort of current world um, uh, circumstances, uh, which I didn't, you know, didn't know about at the time. But um, though I think it might have been about Syria, thinking about it back when I made this. So not unrelated. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought that's... <clears throat> and works can change meaning over time. Like they, they definitely do. Um, like this one, uh, you can... You can see I was, uh, it's called, this one was featured uh, in the Elysium show. And this actually won the uh, Welsh Artist Prize at BEEP 2020. Um, and you can see this one's a real, it's it, it's kind of, it's a real, it's a real mix. I mean, it is, it is sculptural, but it is also very painterly. You know, there are very flat elements that are only one-sided. There are sort of more sculptural elements. And yeah, and it's called... Kelfi, uh, because obviously uh, you can just maybe see a little self-portrait down in the corner, sort of I'm in there. Uh, Kelf is the Welsh word for art. So selfie, Kelfi, yeah, self-portrait art. This is 
concerns of the artists, politics, uh, lots, lots of different things. Um, <clears throat> and the only reason, the reason I included it in the Elysium show was because uh, it only had one side of it displayed, and I just wanted to display the other side of it, <laughs> just so people who had seen it, seen the beep exhibition, could come to the Elysium show and say, "Oh yeah, oh, that's that's the other side of it." All right, okay. Um, so with this work and uh, a couple of other works at the time, I was positing the idea of stimulacra. Now, simulacra is a philosophical concept. It's gained, it's it's kind of come back into vogue a bit recently with um, our online stuff with Instagram, selfies, things like that. Um, <clears throat> basically, I use it in the sense that it's very stimulating imagery, uh, which simulates life, but is in fact completely different, is a complete sort of manufactured simulation that's so if you hear me use the term stimulacra that's what i mean um uh, so yeah i mean there's there's just so much in here to unpack i mean there's a the bird looks 3d in this one but is in fact when you turn around it's sort of just 2d and flat there's there's computer games there's yeah sort of there's politics there's rugby there's a swing uh, everything you know um so yeah just a sort of a bit of a cacophony of pleasant nice imagery bit unsettling altogether uh and that's a theme that a lot of my work does have is that it's sort of very simple easy quick imagery but then there's there, there's just a, a bit more to it or something a bit off and you realize that uh well maybe that's nice and that fits with the whole sort of online uh you know sort of fake news thing if you um sort of very throwaway quick statements trying to describe a much larger and more convoluted complex truth um yeah that's so with this one for instance you need to see it from the front oak tree acorn pretty simple uh you go around the back and there's there's a spine going up the middle of, of the acorn there's a few things happening in there and stuff you can't see inside the tree i mean uh yeah that that's that sort of thing um so <clears throat> so i often use this type of sort of imagery this very it's very pleasant sort of imagery that you get the one you know you'd, you'd get into that would draw you say online where you clicking away um and sort of use it in in this in this sort of this type of way. So this is a piece called Rod, uh, which is Welsh for water wheel. Like water wheel was one of those images that Windows background designers like to they they like uh, like to push forward a lot. Um, so and in this context, it can be representative of I don't know human human beings taming um, the ecological world, perhaps or where uh, there's political nature to this. If you see blue and red in my works, it's generally Tories and Labour, but can can go either way. Uh, I won't comment on the art. Uh, there's a whole, I don't know, there's reams and reams and reams of um, red and blue art history stuff. Uh, but no, this 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 isn't that. Um, you can see sort of the blue at the top is it's, it's quite kind of an odd shape. It's a little marshal, looks a bit like a cannon, whereas the red sheets at the bottom could be sort of, i don't know sheet steel industry possibly um the wheel itself wouldn't work as a wheel it's got grass growing on it um but yeah so i guess the point is just simple imagery which nevertheless can say a lot uh and is used in in a way that's not completely oh look at me look at me sort of thing. um and that's where we get where we get to this uh this is one of my most recent works and one of the largest ones i've ever made this is on display at elysium at the moment uh it's called it's getting on for one and you look at it and yeah that's that's good to look at right that is pleasant it looks looks like a kind of a botanical illustration you know sort of brought to life um and yeah, it's, and you know, and with the signature and stuff, it's balanced. It's just you know, it's 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 meant to look nice. But if you 
thinking a bit more about it, the, the thinking behind it, um, that my local landlord thinks it's about memory and how sort of details can can disappear from memory possibly. Um, but what I actually sort of mean by it, it's all about the plant itself and time because it's it, it's a dandelion clock, isn't it? And it's getting on for one. Um, I'm sure you've heard or heard the old... Uh, the uh, I can't remember maxim, which is if the uh, if all of time of the world were a clock, humans would appear at two seconds to midnight. So, the, with this one getting on for one on the first blow, um, means that you know maybe our time's running out. You know maybe each of these seeds is representative of a, a, a chance, an idea to rescue a situation possibly. Um, but the the kicker and the reason that this becomes true is this guy. So this is a blue bottle or a blowfly. And I don't know if you know what blowflies eat, but it's corpses and shit. So he, yeah, he, he, he sort of, although he looks like he should be there because sort of botanical drawings and, and entomological drawings, they look, you know, fairly similar. It's, it's quite disconcerting. So it's nice imagery, but there's just something off there that you hang on. That's, that's, a, that's a bit weird. What's he trying to say? Uh, and then the signature, yeah, that's just, uh, I don't know, this kind of thing you'd say, just my little joke about, I guess. Because, um, yeah, when I when people sort of commission these or they, they buy them and stuff, they they always ask me to sign them. And it's, it's, it's odd because they think that it's not worth anything, kind of, you know, without the signature or, you know, somebody's going to somehow replicate this piece and... Yeah, and then they they won't be able to to sell it, and so there's there's very little point in in, in signing these, um, but nevertheless, sort of everyone, you know, sort of everyone asks. So, yeah, I, I just thought I'd sign it as a bit of a you know sort of, sort of a bit of fun. Um, yeah, that's that's what I said, and yeah, and had had a couple of sort of arguments about it at the opening, I think, but uh, yeah, that's that's why it's there. Um, okay, so. It balances it it's unnecessary this one anyway okay next one and i think rosalind is gonna like this because i have actually catted in the past uh this is cloud cat and this is following on from sort of the the internet imagery and sort of perceptions and things like that so you can see he's, he's sort of quite fluffy generally um looks a bit like a cloud and that's that's great um there's also a bit of sort of egyptian cat about him uh yeah and it's, it's, it's kind of about the human interpretation or view of cats versus the actuality um so obviously cats are probably are the most popular thing on the internet and you know so people would don't think twice about having one in their homes and stuff uh yet the actuality of cats is a bit, bit uh, a bit, a, a bit different, and it's not their fault, by the way. Um, so if you look round the back, round the other side, again, the duality of the paintings, I always, always like that. Um, you can see these little in the image on the left. You can see sort of all these little, little marks. These are little gravestones, and there's even sort of a, a type of lemming thing and a, and a frigate bird thing there. Anyway, so cats by human introduction, have been responsible for about 70, 70 different species going extinct, I think. So the front bit is what we we perceive cats as being, and the, re the reverse is what cats actually are. Um, <clears throat> and again, I stress it's, it's not the cat's fault, it's a human problem. Uh, they're just being cats. Um, but I just always quite liked the the... The, the sort of the dichotomy of that is that most people say, oh yeah, no, no, cat's fine. But then it's like, well, no, you've got to, <laughs> you've got to control, you've got to accept some responsibility and just, yeah, it's, you know, for them and, and, and us and everything else. Uh, and that, that type of sort of, I don't know, sort of slightly wanky social commentary. I was very, very, very up on that for a while. Um, this is Mammon. This was featured alongside Kelfi in the Beep 2020 uh, competition. And this is just a full on dig at capitalism. Grr. Uh, you can see there's the, the there's like the there's even the Brexit 
unicorn there. Um, and you notice this, this one has a ground, which I also quite liked. And this is just, it's, it's one of those things where I didn't know how it was going to turn out. Just kind of start it, see what it does. Um, and yeah, it did seem, seems to have worked okay. Um, I think the, the hand with the cigarette is quite a good symbol of kind of uh, short-term gain, long-term harm. Um, but yeah, I, it, again, I just wanted to really see what was possible kind of paint-wise. I quite like the, the smoke. That's, that's quite nice. Um, right, and so this sort of vaguely vaguely political, very lefty sense, um, we get to niggle. So this uh, this was actually, again, this again, this is in the Elysium show, uh, is displayed, though, that way around, I think. <clears throat> um, but yeah, this is one of the pieces you start out with a sort of very clear aim in mind and have to build them up from the bottom uh, and then it just completely changes on you. <laughs> like uh, it was initially about uh, immigration, sort of the and the the general mindset and attitudes towards uh, immigration that so, um, that people have. But then it it just yeah, I don't know. It's just just changed completely. I don't even really know what it's about now. <laughs> um, but if you'll notice with this one, there's there's kind of like there's like a ground, like a background in the middle, but it's in effect two grounds, two backgrounds, um, which I quite, which I quite liked. And I think that's sort of what I got, got into more playing with, with this piece was sort of the working between the two sides. So they, they're sort of joined and they're together and they work together, but they are also sort of very separate. Um, a lot of the em uh, elements and imagery in this, I have no idea what it means. Um, can see in the bottom there's Irving Washington bottom of this one was Washington Irving those of you who read Catch 22 you sort of know what that's that's about um there's the mouth that the mouth's actually sort of a tunnel that goes through to some scaffolding um there's a boat with eyes yeah it's <laughs> um once some of it meant something but then <clears throat> all combined together it's just like right well I don't know what this means anymore. I'm just going to keep making stuff and see sort of what, what works, what happens. That pink thing, no idea why I did it. Don't know what it means. It just felt right. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so I put it in and I, I, I think, it, I think it kind of works in strangely architectural way. Uh, oh, there you go. You can see it sort of see through the mouth. Um, oh, and also, uh, this this chap, uh, John. Um, <clears throat> I think it was meant to be somebody else, and then Jonathan, upon seeing it, said, "Oh, that's David Bowie." And I was like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, it kind of is actually, isn't it?" So, so now it's now it's it's Bowie now. Uh, so, and works changing, becoming different things. Um, that was that happened with this one. This is Stillbird with life. And I began it, um, actually, uh, I began it about, um, basically talking about, uh, an abusive relationship that I was in and sort of just basing, basing it on that. And then it just sort of really, so sort of I, I did the, the bottom bit and it kind of, it just, it, it just changed hugely. I started to add other elements that I thought worked and it just, and yeah, just, just, com just completely changed, just became completely different. Um, again, I still really don't know what it means. I know that there's elements of, uh, sort of the art world in there. Uh, there's a picture frame at the top, uh, top there, some scaffolding. Um, the landscapes themselves are quite, you know, they're painterly. They look like they're sort of, you know, flowing paint um, that is then happens to be landscapes. And there's the bird as well. And the the blue tit, he's he's very, very solid, very larger than life, very, uh, very colourful. Um, which again, that's not how <laughs> not how I'd usually paint paint him, but um but no, I th I, th I think that's that's important. It's a big part of my life. Um 
sort of environment bears bears especially um there's actually there's a there's a bit of a hole in his belly you can't really see it from photographs um but yeah if you just look if you look sort of below it from the right angle you can see there's this hole and that tells you that he's he's hollow he's not a solid object as as solid as he looks um <clears throat> and what that means is sort of my experience when seeing uh seeing uh, some birds it's it's like oh um it's brilliant that i'm seeing them but i know the numbers are declining so it's that kind of like yeah this is amazing but it also reminds me that it's that it's not that that this is almost almost a bit hollow um yeah that's about all i've got on that one really uh if anyone else has suggested anything please feel free um then that leads to the last last work in the Elysium show. This is for fathers who left no bones. Now, uh, it's, this is another one that's sort of it's not it's not that it's changed on me. It just doesn't work quite how I envisioned it working. Because um, I said each piece you have to you have to almost very scrupulously plan and then work out and it has to succeed in some way or form. I mean you can change what you do in there, but you've you've got to be wary of messing messing stuff up because yeah it's quite an investment. Um so anyway, so this this is obviously referencing I mean still life, flowers in jars, I mean, flowers in vase, that's quite, you know, that's that's successful. Um oh also the uh sunflowers, unfortunately. I don't think there is a way to put dried flowers uh in a vase and it not reference that to be honest with you although it's not really um theoretically it's not not really that linked um what i was going for was sort of a rough visual and symbol symbolic timeline of whales <clears throat> now so wales neolithic history sort of stone age if you will uh is was quite was was really Quite, you know it was brilliant because well not brilliant but it was uh it was, wells was quite heavily sort of co uh, especially around the coasts was quite heavily visited and inhabited around that time because uh, it was easy to get through to get to through the sea and had resources like quite a lot of resources uh so here we have like stone stone leg pillars coming from the sea that joins sort of this this flat surface which was meant to be a table um you see forest at either end of it being cleared in the middle so that's that's farming uh and then you have the dragon's head and the tail they are meant to represent culture um and unfortunately uh it kind of makes it look a bit like a boat like a viking um like a viking longboat uh which i didn't intend and yeah the viking they did visit but they it's a bit later and not that culturally significant to be quite honest or archaeologically significant either uh and then you get to the oh yeah yeah then you get to the vase itself um so you have culture and then you get to politics so each of the sections each of these colored sections is a constituency of modern wales i've grouped some of the the geographically smaller labor ones together um but yeah, so you, so the blue is conservative held ones, the reds labour, and greens is plied. You can just about see Anglesey uh, there at the top. So yeah, that's that's both sides, um, and then obviously topped by these load of daffodils that look like they're made of paper. Um, again, I wanted to be very painterly. I didn't want it to. I didn't want them to look look natural. I wanted to look like they were painted. Um, and yeah, they just, they sort of look like they're made of paper, but I don't, the effect isn't bad. You know, it's not, it's, it's not something I'm hugely unhappy with. Um, and yeah, I mean, you can read, you can read that, read the fact that they're a load of, a load of dead flowers in sort of, sort of anyway. I mean, people like to dry flowers, dry flowers are good luck. The daffodil is representative of Wales, obviously. Um, I don't mean that, Wales is dying um I think I think if anything it means that we sort of have to more like unite in sort of certain goals and 
especially at, at the moment. Um, yeah. Uh, to do, let's have a look. So yeah, um, and then I one thing that came up from the exhibition is I uh, noticed just how gorgeous this looks with uh, light shone through it. Um, really love that shadow. That's just that's absolutely lovely, um, and I like how it demonstrates really how how it is painting, how it is sculptural painting, if, if it does this kind of silhouette um, with the, the suspension and stuff, you know, I think, yeah, I, th I think I've, I've, I finally, finally got there. Um, right, I think that is actually about it.